Hi everyone. As you probably know, Unity features a nav mesh system. It allows us to easily and quickly define areas in which AI, artificial intelligence, can move around. Once the zones have been defined, all we have to do is ask our AI to move from point A to point B, and on its own it will find the shortest path. Although this system is very powerful, it has some limitations when it comes to dynamic elements. Because the nav mesh can only be baked during the development of the game, we don't have any way, by default, to regenerate the nav mesh during runtime, aka play mode. Which means that elements appearing or disappearing from our scene will make our generated nav mesh obsolete and our AI will still use the last generated version of the navmesh. There is actually a solution to this problem, but with the default Unity installation, we don't have access to the classes and methods to use dynamic navmesh. We first have to import a package. It is considered experimental, so we have to keep that in mind. Let's install this package. Go to Window and Package Manager. You can click on the plus in the top left corner and choose to import a package by its name. The name of the package is com.unity.ai.navigation. Be careful not to make mistake in the name, otherwise Unity will not find it. After a few seconds, Unity should display the package on the right called AI Navigation. And as I told you, it is marked as experimental. Now that the package is installed, let's proceed. I'm going to start by setting up a small scene that will allow me to show you how the package works. So first, let's create a small platform from a cube. Let's say 3x3 three three units. I then duplicate this small platform and put the copy a little further. Finally, between these two platforms, I'm adding a smaller one that will act like a bridge. Then we can add on any of the platforms a new component called a surface nav mesh. This component comes from the package we added and it probably reminds you of something. This component looks a lot like what we have in the navigation tab which can be opened from Window AI Navigation. Now that this window is opened, let's seize the opportunity to slightly reduce the size of our agent. Since the test scene is very small, it will make things easier for us. You can then select the platform on which we added the surface nav mesh, and we can click on Bake. A blue zone appears representing the nav mesh. In other words, this zone represents all the places where our AI can go. I'm going to slightly move my platforms so I have only one zone for all of the platforms. And as you can see, it stretches from the starting platform on the left to the arriving platform on the right, passing through the bridge in the middle. Some of you probably noticed that all my platforms have not been marked as static. This is specific to the use of the AI navigation package, because usually when working with the navigation window, we have to mark every object as static for our AI to walk on them. So here it's not necessary. Let's quickly test this scene with a very basic AI. I'm adding a capsule that will act as a character, I'll rename it AI and add a navmesh agent component to it. I'll also lower the agent speed and its acceleration just a bit because our test scene is relatively small. We'll also need a script to control this agent, so let's add one called artificial intelligence. We can open this script, we'll provide a destination for our agent, and our agent's only purpose will be to reach that destination. Because we're using AI components, we need to import unityengine.ai, then we can create a variable of type agent. 
we'll also need another reference to the target point, which corresponds to our AI destination. Then in the update method, let's ask our AI to go to that destination with this line. And that's it. We don't need anything else in this script, so we can head back to Unity, create an empty game object that will represent the destination. And I will also add a custom gizmo to make it easily identifiable in the scene. I'll then place this target on the other platform. And once it's placed, we can fill the variables of our script. So agent is just above and the target is the new object. We can then press play and we should see our AI make it across the bridge to its destination. Great, but so far nothing special. We could have made this exact scene with the default navigation window. So let's spice up our scene by adding a bit of dynamism. Let's make the bridge spin on itself. To do things properly, I will create a new game object called Scene Manager and I'll attach a new script with the same name. Inside this script, I will add a variable called object to rotate for our bridge. And then I'll add a single line making this object rotate on itself over time. I'm not going too much into the details of this line because it's not really the subject of the video. Let's head back to Unity. We have to drag and drop the bridge into the variable. And we can select the platform with the nav mesh surface and press play. The bridge does spin, but without any surprise, our AI just doesn't care. It makes it across the bridge without considering its rotation. The reason for this is the blue area of the nav mesh. As you can see, the current nav mesh is still the one we had baked earlier when the bridge was not rotating. We basically now have the exact same problem that we usually have with the nav mesh. It does not take runtime modifications into account. But again, fortunately, the subject of today's video is to make our nav mesh dynamic, and that's what we're going to do. We can go back into our scene manager script and add a new variable of type nav mesh surface. But in order to do this, we need to import unity.ai.navigation. Then in the update function, just after rotating the bridge, we can call build nav mesh for this new variable. And that's actually it. We don't need anything else. We can go back to Unity. Don't forget to fill the variable with the platform having the nav mesh surface component. You can also select this same platform so we can see the nav mesh updating in real time. Then press play and enjoy the show. The bridge's blue zone will now follow the object rotation and when it is sufficiently close to the two platforms on the left and on the right, the blue areas will combine into a single blue zone for a few seconds, which will give our character enough time to cross the bridge. So we did it. Our nav mesh is now dynamic. It will regenerate every frame over time. But it is important to note that in this example, our prototyping scene is fairly small. So I can rebake the nav mesh in the update function. But in a scene that would be much larger than this, it will be very expensive in resources. And this is why it is important to partition your scenes, to cut them in multiple parts. If you have a 5 by 5 km terrain, it is useless to generate the nav mesh on the complete surface. A few meters around the character is usually enough. But it is also possible on the nav mesh surface component to perform a small filtering based on the layers of the object. For example, we see here that in include layers, by default, we have everything, which means that every object in our scene, regardless of the layers, will be part of the nav mesh that we are generating. I can uncheck one of those layers, ignore raycast, for example, which means that every object having this layer will no longer be part of the generated nav mesh. 
let's apply this same layer to the destination platform and press play. As you can see, it is indeed not used by the NFMesh generation. We no longer have a blue zone on the right platform. Another tip I can give you is that you don't necessarily have to run the bake in the update method. You can use an interval, for example, regenerate the NavMesh every 10 seconds or so. Or even better, you can just regenerate the NavMesh when it is absolutely necessary. For example, when the player has finished building a base or the other way around, if a base is destroyed on the map, it could be worth regenerating the NavMesh. It really depends on your project type. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you today, so I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it will be useful to some of you. Please keep in mind that the package we use today is experimental, so it is going to change over time. Let's cross our fingers for this feature to be stable as soon as possible and integrated into Unity by default. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you like my work, I'm not releasing a lot of videos lately, but I'm really trying. Thanks for watching and see you around. Cut friend out.